Namaste. It has been said that uh, when we love the divine, one kind of loving the divine is excluding the world. And the other is, which is con consistent with integral yoga, is to love the divine even in the world, in its manifold play and especially within human beings. That's where the problem comes. So, what is meant by loving the divine in others? So, we can just take a step backward. What is the divine? What is it that we mean when we use the word divine? Very often we just use the word very loosely. So, divine at its highest, none can know unless you become completely one and merged. So, that's what in Indian conception is Brahman, Parbrahman and beyond. But what we can know is, which is within our capacities and limits, is by the manifestations. That is within given to us. That is the standard way of approaching even divine, uh, divine realization. Because suddenly we all are seeking the divine, but the mind needs some, some kind of a support, some kind of a help. So we love the divine through the manifestations. So in the manifestation, we have subtle manifestations. Wherever we see something which is extraordinarily beautiful, something where automatically something in us, heart leaps as if it's a cry of divinity or an expression of divinity inside. It could be a thought, it could be a gesture, it could be an action, it could be a feeling, it could be a will. And there is something in us like an intuitive sense which says that here is divinity. Same, let's apply it to the Guru, the Master. The Master is also having a human persona. But why do we feel that he is the Master? We have not taken a test or asked him, okay, tell me, convince me that you are the divine. It is because there is again in us an intuitive sense that the divine is manifest in him and through him. The mother gave a very beautiful answer when somebody asked, who is the, what is the divine? She has given a number of answers. One answer was that the divine is, uh, she, she was asked, who am I? She said, you are the divine in many disguises. But with regard to what is the divine, she gave a very interesting answer. The divine is what you adore in Sri Aurobindo. So wherever our heart leaps in deep adoration, is there in the synthesis. All love which is of the nature of adoration has a spiritual element within it. So basically when we say love the divine in practical terms, it means love that which is the best and the highest in the person. That will be the widest possible. Everybody, you will see, if you see carefully, there will be something which is really speaking very uh, highest and the best. And Sri himself, you know, speaks about it, for which sometimes people misunderstand. For example, he says, the zealot and fervor of the Mohammedan. Now, normally, this zealot and fervor, fervor unfortunately, leads to fanaticism and fundamentalism. That's true. But if you go to its core, look at the kind of commitment to whatever they believe in. So there is in everybody something which is very beautiful. And there is an example of the mother when somebody went to the mother and said, you know, you have carried, you are having so many people in the ashram, many of them are not even working. They should be out. They won't buy it gone. Because you know, so much money, all this is wasted on people. She said, why give me the list of those whom you think should not be in the ashram. And the list was given. And she kept about 25 people and she kept thinking, but this is there, this is there, this is there. Finally, it came to one person. And for that person, she said, but doesn't he fix the stamps well? So basically, when it is said, love the divine in the person, it does not mean some kind of a formless thing. That like, obviously, that formless essence of the divine is there, but that is like a divine, we can take the example of a fragrance. So on one side you have a flower which is all very beautiful. We know artificial flowers can be uh, created, which may be even look wise more beautiful than the natural. But what you cannot imitate even with all the chemicals you may spray is the natural fragrance. You just can't do it. You can try it. It may be strong fragrance, it may be mild, it may be similar. But if you look at the natural fragrance of a flower, it is something which is inbuilt in its fabric. It's not that 
it's in this part of the petal it's not that it's in there it's it's everywhere it emanates so in every human being in some it is more in others it is it is massed so where it is massed massed in a heap of darkness and all things which are just the very opposite it is very difficult so usually we find that many human beings why do we find difficulty in loving human beings because we love the outer personality the form even though there is a way one can even appreciate the form without actually getting attached to it but it's very risky because very often the form has that capacity to draw us and you know after that many things which are connected with the form which are basically habits of the mind and the body but that apart so normally we love the form or the personality but if we really look at it even in the personality there would be something which is exceptionally unique high noble which you look at it and say oh wow even in the form there are people you say oh these eyes they are divine eyes isn't it the rest of the person may be whatever the person is and that's why we see such a so very often when we say why i'm saying this is sometime it is said no no form has to be shunned yes in old yogas that's how it was but in our yoga in indian thought when we say the you give the description of ram how do you give there is a physical description ajan bhuj shar chap dharik sangram jit khar doshanam there is a physical description and there is a description of his personality traits which make him what he is and the highest of all these traits is maryada purushottam he is purushottam the highest among human beings the best the noblest the shrest and yet he knows how to limit himself as the ocean limits itself this is what makes ram what he is now wherever we see this aspect in humanity wherever we see that aspect of some kind of divinity the other day we were saying like durga the courage the strength to take on all that you know challenges you there we will see the divine aspect now this is the first part to love a human being in his highest and the best second part second part which is uh, comes as a complimentary do not try to change the person to be otherwise mother says that who is the best friend the best friend is someone who loves you in the highest best part but does not want you to be otherwise now what happens when you see something beautiful and exceptional in a human being by exceptional i mean like shri krishna speaks about like in a vibhuti something very beautiful good high that's his expression of divinity don't try to make the person like you understand your expression of divinity maybe that is dangerous because in each one the divine is expressing himself in many fold ways imagine a garden where there are only roses and same color roses it be boring and monotonous god has not made the world like that so do not try to change the other person and third more importantly do not try to appropriate the person oh this person how nice if i possess this person i can showcase this person he is mine she is mine this is where ignorance starts you have loved the divine element in a human being but now you want that person to belong to you this is obviously ignorance fourth which comes along with it love is an act of giving but giving what does it mean is it giving to the ignorance of a human being no does giving mean that if the person wants you to walk a path of a dharma you say okay i am giving myself no dharma is sacred dharma is important your aspiration is important but it is giving your best to nurture the person's best this is what giving means and yes there is possibility of a complete giving but that's so rare in two human beings that we should not start imagining and believing that here is my <laughs> my as people say soul mate so i keep telling first find the soul if mate is just time mate will come don't try to put the cart who oh, she is or he is my soul mate have you found the soul to say that you know you find the soul mate to find your soul that's your business 
Till then you may have a mate. It's okay. So there what do we do? If we have not found the soul and we have a mate. So there we can turn even that human love into a means for the divine discovery within us and within the other person. How? The mother gives a very interesting program. She says if you love without expectations, without the impurities of desires, egoism, all these things which make love salient, then slowly you will touch the principle of divine love within you and within the person. And then love can be restored to its beauty and pristine purity. So again when it is said without desire, now in a human love, especially of a man and a woman, certain desires are bound to come. So that's why we see that there are certain things which Indian thought thought about it. So even desire, ultimate complete rejection of desire is necessary for the supramental life. But we should not imagine that I have leaped there. So moderation of desire under his sattvic guidance or better still, if one has access under the psychic and the spiritual urge. What does it mean psychic and spiritual urge? Because it's a very slippery slope we are standing. Love must be felt deep within the core of the heart, deep inside, in that soul sense. And then when it emerges in the fullness of union, Physical may be involved. That's how we see in Savitri, Shivinder describes. But even there, this physical union will not be crude. Because when the psychic changes us within and even the form, certain things which right now are considered as an expression of love, which are a crude animal atavism, they will drop away. Because the moment they enter, there will be a problem. It's an abyss which will open. So that's why I said it's a slippery slope. There can be beautiful expressions even of physical love. And I'm saying all this uh, on the basis of all that, of course, we have read. Shubhita speaks of that. But all crude elements, so what has mankind done? Either swung between crude expressions of love or towards an ascetic withdrawal. Interestingly, these two accompany each other. People with a strong ascetic tendencies have a very crude something inside, that's why they need this. So people who want to withdraw and ascetic and shut in the cave means something very crude is there in the nature from which they are trying to escape. And you see this in certain religions and I don't want to name, where on one side you want to even look down, I was told, don't look at a woman's face, look down, <coughs> cover her fully, etc, etc. But the same, the other side is completely not only indulgent, indulgent in the worst possible ways you can imagine. But Indian thought, Sanatan Dharma understood it very beautifully. So it did not deny the expression, only it said keep purifying, keep refining it. That's why Shubhinda says in Savitri that each part in us desires its absolute. But of course this is a long big program, it's not something which can be done in a day. But one thing is for sure, we come back to the question, what is meant by loving the divine in another is to love that which is best and highest. How to know it? You can't know it with the mind. Why? Right? Because the mind al always believes, the ego al always believes that what is my understanding of my own best, which may not even be the best in that person. If I see in another, I would feel that is best. But that's not, may not be the best. We may not know even our best. Somebody may think there is an example of um, uh, Amal Kiran. He thought that it is his intellect. But Sri said, no, it's your vital which kept you to the yoga. And he says later on that I had a tendency to fall. <laughs> and I fell at mother's feet. <laughs> and that changed my life. Even about Sri he asked that it must be your mighty intellect that made you, you know, go into this yoga so far and high, something like that. Shubhita said, no, it's not my intellect. It is my determined will. It is the determination of his will. And if you really look at Shubhita's picture, uh, all his pictures, even as a child, you will see there is a very determined will which can be seen, especially, you know, in his chin area, 
eyes of course are fathomless chin area but you will see that this is not a rigid will what is meant by that is a will which wants to reach there but has not fixed the way that's what Shivinda says fix yourself on the goal on the idea and let the way evolve as you go through life but if you fix the path then it becomes a problem because life will unfold many things so even when we love the best and the highest don't build a castle of dreams sada sada ke liye forever <laughs> because if you do that you'll be unhappy even if you are meant for each other it may not be granted in the secret providence of things i am using the word meant for each other in its highest possible sense why because see you, you see even mother and shiv in those life how they had to go through their own individual journeys including relationship before they could come to each other so why it is so is it subject in its own right we will not go into it but again we come back to that love the best and highest in people and you will be happy and others will be happy don't try to change them as far as your yoga is concerned love without expectation love as much as possible purifying the desire element not entering into all those distortions of love which are known as jealousy is possessiveness love them knowing that it's a sacred trust from the divine the love you feel for somebody is not yours it is a trust from the divine it's given to you and therefore you must fulfill all that it means it's a tremendous power it's a transforming power even human love has a part to transform even for some time when people are in love that's how shivinda puts it in savitri it's a far transcendence angel here love is man's lean on the absolute to live to love our signs of infinite things but we must treat it as a sacred trust that it's not meant for keep okay what advantage i can take selfishness calculations if they enter into love be sure it is not love it's anything else but love those masquerading things so in this sense we can arrive at the maximum from the human experience of love and reduce the suffering which often accompanies everything that gives us intense joy because of the human imperfection some people become cynics that danger is oh human love everything if you go that way everything in human life will give you pain if you get intensely attached to it as simple as that <laughs> be it a house be it a job be it a human relationship so that's where the line between true love and attachment which clings wants appropriates is a thin line but that's what sadhana is about after all what else it is sadhana is not shutting yourself away into a room that may only lead to an aggrandized egoism i am a great sadhak i don't step out of the room isi ka ego ho jata hai i am a great sadhak because i have read everything of mother and shri <laughs> so when we deal in human relationship it is actually very frankly mother has said it it can be very purifying because it shows up your defects otherwise if there is nobody to tell you that uh, you are a fool <laughs> and everybody is flattering you uh, be sure that if you are surrounded by flatterers god has not taken you seriously so when you have some people who can tell you could be wrong you have this problem that defect be very thankful <laughs> that the divine means to do something with me use it for the yoga learn to go behind appearances learn to love despite everything one can even love despite everything opposite this is beautifully described in one of sri aurobindo's writings on isha bhashya upanishad he says say not that such a love does not exist whence comes that loves that comes down from an infinitely high intellect to someone which is far below and its singular example is when you see the picture of sri aurobindo with nilani devi have you ever noticed she is sitting and shivinda is half reclining now compare the two and see how he loved her 
the God has seen to it that it is the one sorrow which could still touch my heart when she departed and that is 1918. He has shown by his example. So all that old idea of, you know, either indulgent love like, you know, I don't want to name that in the name of all love, all love, let's party together. And the other old idea equally of an ascetic withdrawal into monastic life. We have to find the, as Buddha would say, the middle path, the path of balance. And it is one way that I have understood Shurasya Dhara. Shurasya Dhara is not being on the tender hooks. Shurasya Dhara is if you press too hard, you will get cut. <laughs> if you tilt, you fall this way or that way. It is to walk with a state of perfect balance. That comes when we have the goal clear in front of us. So everything can be made a process of sadhana and human love though the most difficult of all yet in a certain sense within human experience the most gratifying of all if you look at it that way so certainly it is one of the things most difficult and challenging and perhaps that's why it also has to be attempted the whole Savitri epic Shobindu uses the word conjugal love conquering death it doesn't say love conquering death conjugal love conquering death and we see that in several places, several things. Nalida wrote a whole uh, article on to love man. And he says, with that I'll complete, that there are three stages of evolution of love within human beings. It's described in Savitri, page 632. All our earth starts from the mud and climbs to the sky. But Nalida writes it, there are three stages. First, when you have the usual human love, <laughs> we don't need to elaborate. <laughs> Everybody knows. And people get hurt, disillusioned, etc., etc. Don't get hurt and disillusioned. Say that I don't know how to love well and as human beings we are imperfect. Never get disillusioned and cynic. Then the next step is where you withdraw all your love, energies of love from all that scattered here and there. Na tato, na mata, na bandhu, na bhrata. Na patni, na pati. <laughs> Then turn it towards the divine. This is the second phase. And the third is, as Nandita says, you come out and love man. Because loving man is the most difficult of all. And Nandita says this is so true. He said, loving God is easier. Why? Because he is not going to criticize you. He is not going to throw a challenge at you. You know you can't possess him. Some people try, oh, I am close to mother. I am working in mother's room. I am working here. But... You can't appropriate the divine. He's too big. <laughs> you will get eaten up. Which is wonderful. And the divine will always is a giver. By nature he is a giver. Though the best relation with the divine is to give yourself. But still, he will not say anything. He doesn't hurt your ego. And the second thing which doesn't get involved, which is the slippery slope of love, is sexuality. Though there are mystic experiences where even that happens. But in human beings, all of this comes into play and that's why the victory of human love. But it's only when we have gone through the entire purification process and human love itself becomes a means of purification and transforming the energy of love. Namaste.